Hello everyone, Xeno What If here. Bring in Season 2 Part 27 of What If the Transformers Were in My Hero Academia. Link in the description of the fanfiction of this What If. A. N. Listen here YouTube. I do not own anything and this is not a scam. Chapter 53, Hero Killer vs. UA Students. Comma dot dot. Flopping herself down on the living room futon, Kyoko let out a sigh of relief, her muscles burning and aching after a long day of training. The sun was starting to go down outside, and things were relatively peaceful on the secluded island. I think I'm starting to get why Snake Eyes wanted their base to be out here, besides trying to avoid the public eye. Kyoka's gaze set itself out to the open window, marveling at the gorgeous mixture of red, orange and purple that the sunset was making in the sky. This place is truly beautiful. Shame I'll only be here for four more days, hearing the door rattle open behind her, the punk rocker turned to see Kenzie coming in, now in matching black top and sweatpants. MMPH. The martial artist groaned as she stretched her arm up, pulling back on it with her other hand. Oh, man, talk about a full day. Kenzie sent a smile down to her junior, placing both hands on her hips. I have to say, Kyoka, you've been doing pretty exceptional yourself. She sat down on the futon next to her, crossing her legs. I honestly didn't think you'd get used to the training this quickly. Wearing a sheepish smile of her own, Kyoka rubbed her neck and chuckled. Ah, hee hee, I wouldn't say I'm totally used to this kind of training yet. Jinx really doesn't hold back, I've learned. That iron hand technique is something else. Mackenzie rolled her eyes. Yeah, she doesn't prescribe to the idea of pulling your punches, even when you're a newbie. Her grin retuned as she bowed her head to Kyoka slightly. Oh, and, thanks for being there when I talked to her the day before. Your support really helped. Ah, don't mention it. The conversation between the two had been a fairly emotional one, to be sure, and by the end, Kyoka could swear that both were on the verge of tears. But in the end, Jinx and Kenzie had come to an understanding, and all was right once again. I'm just glad that everything worked out in the end. Kyoka winked. Yeah, so did I. Reaching for the remote, Mackenzie pointed to the TV across the room. So, shall we see what's on the tube? Answering with a nod, Kyoka watched as her friend began surfing through the channels, giving her thoughts on the programming while looking for what they'd watch. But then, something caught Kyoka's eye when the news channel passed by, telling Kenzie to stop. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Back to the news. Kenzie was confused, but complied, but what she saw next made her and Kyoka's jaws drop. We're reporting to you live from Hosu City, where something unbelievable is unfolding. The news reporter shouted as her helicopter passed over the city. The camera aimed down to the buildings below, many of which were on fire and zoomed in to get a better view of the giant beasts that were on the attack. Ferocious monsters of unknown origin are attacking the city. Many heroes are on the scene, but have found themselves completely overwhelmed by the creatures. Thankfully, pros such as Mirko and Endeavor have been reported on the scene. The woman's words only barely registered with the two girls as they stared at the screen with disbelief and uncertainty. They watched as the beasts rampaged onward, with a winged one plucking up one poor hero while a larger one engaged a horned hero. What in the world are those things? Kenzie managed to utter out. A are they even men? Or are they actual monsters? Nomu. Kenzie perked her head up and turned to Kyoka, whose demeanor had changed to a more serious countenance. Wait, you know those things, Kyoka? Kind of. The punk rocker replied. Our class saw one of those things a while back, the League of Villains had one when they attacked the USJ. Her eyes widening, Mackenzie pointed back to the screen. So you think, these ones could be related to them, too? Without a second's hesitation, Kyoka nodded. Without a doubt, there was another pause as they kept watching, seeing Mirko finally show herself to save that one hero from the flying Nomu, giving it one of her mighty kicks. Ha ha. All right. Mackenzie pumped her fist victoriously. Love seeing Mirko in action. She's one of my faves. Haha, ha, yeah, same here. Kyoka agreed, though her smile didn't last as she kept pondering the reason behind the attack. But if the League is making another move, why attack Hosu? Hearing the door rattle open again, the two girls whirled around, seeing Jinx and Snake Eyes walk in. The better question is, why not Hosu? Jinx countered as the two walked over, their eyes focusing on the TV. 
I was wondering if you girls had noticed the breaking news. The League of Villains seems to be getting bolder, and the fact that they targeted Hosu must not be a coincidence, being the Hero Killer's latest target. You think the Hero Killer and the League are connected in some way, Jinx? Kyoko wondered. It's a distinct possibility, though right now, it's only a theory. The Kunoichi explained, with Snake Eyes giving a single nod. We've been doing some investigating of the League ourselves since their first attack. After all, while our primary focus is stopping Cobra, that doesn't mean we don't help out where we can when it concerns other potential threats. She shifted her eyes down to Kyoka curiously. I've been meaning to ask, did you any direct conflict with the main members of the League during their attack, Kyoka? Well, sort of, I guess. Folding her arms over her chest, Kyoka thought back to that day, remembering how significant it was not just because of the League, but because of what it meant for the Autobots' presence on Earth. I mean, Bumblebee was more engaged with Shigaraki and Kurogiri than anyone, and All Might dealt with that Nomu for the most part. I was pretty close to the action, that much I know. Jinx hummed, taking in the information. Hum, I see. Well, I, wait. On the screen, look. Everyone's attention went straight back to the TV, just in time to see a certain familiar semi-truck come slamming straight into the larger Nomu, sending it careening across the street and into a building, burying it in rubble. Kyoko went slack-jawed at the sight. There was no doubt who that was. Optimus. It wasn't long before several other Autobots pulled up alongside the Prime, which only left her even more baffled. Red alert, Strongarm and Springer. She squinted her eyes, catching a glimpse of a tiny police car. And checkpoints there, too. What the hell is going on here? That's why I'd like to know. Jinx concurred, with Snake Eyes placing a hand to his chin. Here we thought they were keen on remaining secret but, hold on. On screen, the Kunoichi saw Springer's cockpit open, allowing his driver to disembark, revealing a heavily armored man in a silver and red suit. And Jinx recognized it based off the helmet alone. Ah, I see. Kyoka tilted her head. W wait, who's that? Haha, it's Tracker. Kenzie cheered. You know, the blonde guy that Fowler brought with him the other day. Oh, yeah, the guy who I barely talked to. Kyoka recalled, her wording causing everyone around her to face fault. But what's he doing with them? He's likely there to disguise the Autobots, assisting as a MASK operation. Jinx explained, giving a light nod. And it makes a lot of sense, actually. MASK is known for creating vehicles that shift from one thing to another, be it two vehicles in one or just a vehicle that is armed to the teeth. She glanced down to Kyoka in reassurance. I'm certain that your Autobots must qualify for both, right? The Perplet had to admit, it sounded like a pretty good plan all things considered. And if even Optimus was taking part in the operation, he must have had quite a lot of confidence that the plan would work. Hmm, yeah, I get what you're saying, her sights trailed back to the TV, watching as things started to go down. Well, let's just hope they're able to, wait just a goddamn minute. Shooting up from her seat, Kyoka practically leapt at the TV, much to everyone's shock. Her eyes were almost glued to it, having seen certain color briefly appear. And, sure enough, there he was. Her best friend, dressed in his hero costume, standing side by side with Mirko talking with Optimus before both of them dashed off to parts unknown. Needless to say, Kyoka wasn't happy. Easy Zuku. Kyoka's wrathful scream caught everybody off guard and before Jinx could even ask her what was going on, she sprinted straight out of the room, leaving everyone baffled. But she couldn't waste any time, not in a situation like this. The top of the castle is the only place high enough to get any semblance of service on this godforsaken island, she thought to herself as she clambered up the staircases, blowing past anybody who got in her way. I need to call him and try to find out what the fuck he's thinking. Finally, she made it to the very top, flinging open the door and rushing toward the guard railings. Taking out her phone, Kyoka plugged a jack into it and held it up to the sky, searching for a signal. Come on, come on, ha. Huh? Two bars. Yes. Using her other jack, she scrolled down to Izuku's number and dialed, waiting apprehensively as it rang twice. On the third ring, he picked up. H hello. Izuku Midoriya, what the hell are you thinking? Ah. K Kyoka. I I wasn't expecting a call from you. 
Izuku spoke about as nonchalantly as he could, but just from his stammering, Kyoka knew it was all an act. So, ah, uh, H how's your internship going? Don't you, how's your internship going, me? Kyoka snapped back, what in the world are you doing in a burning hosu? This is what threw Izuku off his game. W what? How did you know? I I mean, I'm not entirely sure what you. Kyoka cut him off with a grimace. Izuku, I saw you on TV, I know you're in the middle of that war zone. Her eyes narrowed, even though she knew he couldn't see her disappointed expression. Also, wow, were you really just going to lie to me? There was a long pause, and when Izuku next spoke, his nervousness gave way to remorse. I, I'm so sorry. As much as she wanted to keep her frustration up, Kyoka had to admit, her heart melted when she heard how genuine his apology was. I should have never tried lying to you. Yes, I'm in Hosu, though not exactly by choice. My teachers and I were on our way to Shibuya when our train was derailed by a Nomu. Things just fell from there. I see. Kyoka replied calmly, her features softening as she understood the situation now. Well, I'm just glad that Prime and the others are there to help. But please, don't do anything rash while you're there, okay? I'm, uh, afraid that might not be possible. Izuku said, with Kyoka furrowing her brow in confusion. Kyoka, eat is not with Manuel. He's gone off on his own and no one knows where he is. Mirko and I are searching for him now, but... A chill went through Kyoka as she quickly connected the dots. You, think he's gone off on his own to find the hero killer, don't you? Yeah, exactly. But like I said, I've got Mirko with me, so if we find them, she will deal with the hero killer, I'll get Eid out of there, whether he wants to or not. Kyoka nodded in approval. Good plan. Also, wow, is Mirko one of your teachers? She managed to crack a smile despite the grim situation. Gotta say, that's kinda impressive. Izuku managed to let out a little chuckle at that. Hee hee, yeah, it is pretty cool. She can be tough sometimes, but she's fair. Also, how is your internship going? Is Snake Eyes on the up and up? Oh, dude, he's totally on the up. The perplet reassured. I can't wait to tell you all about it when we get back. Her demeanor once again changed, taking on a more serious tone. Just, make sure you get out of this alive. For me, okay. There was no second thought for Izuku as he responded. For you, of course. A light blush came to Kyoka's cheeks, but then she heard shouting on the other end of the line, prompting Izuku to give her a quick goodbye. I I've gotta go, Mirko thinks she's found something. I'll talk to you later. Right, stay safe. Oh, and smack Iida upside the head for me, would ya? Hey, at this point, I'll have to do it twice for both of us. The two shared a laugh over that before Izuku gave his last farewell. I'll see you soon, okay. Yeah, see you soon. With that, Kyoka was forced to hang up, bringing her phone down and holding it close to her chest. Despite his promise, she couldn't help but feel anxious at the mere thought of him and the hero killer in the same place. Izuku, please live. Though what Kyoka failed to notice was snake eyes, Jinx and quick kick behind her, the latter two wearing knowing smiles. Oh, she down bad. Mackenzie thought to herself. Comma dot dot. Then so be it. Die. The hero killer's words prompted both Tenya and his engines to roar, the young man bursting forward with a powerful kick aimed straight for Stain's head. For Tensai, but he missed. Stain had been much too fast, leaping up high to avoid the blow, much to Tenya's shock. Ingenium. Stain let the familiar name roll off his tongue. So, your brothers. I let him live so he could spread the good word. The word of M.E. Swinging his leg forward to emphasize the last word, Stain drove his spike-toed boot straight into Tenya's right shoulder, drawing blood and sending him down with another powerful blow to the back. Now standing over him, Stain took his sword up and aimed for the other shoulder. You're a weakling, just like he was. With a sickening sound, the blade was drove straight into Tenya's left shoulder, making him scream bloody murder. You aren't heroes. You have no right to be called that. Both of you are nothing but fakes. Despite his predicament, Tenya wouldn't give up trying to push against the foot that was keeping him down. Shut up, villain. He bellowed. You damaged his spine and paralyzed him from the waist down. He's never gonna be able to work as a pro hero again. He thought back to when he was younger, seeing all of the heroic deeds his brother had done for the sake of helping others. My brother was incredible. 
A caring person who saved many lives. Someone people looked up to. You had no right to take that away from him. Tenya's shoulder buckled, blood pouring out from the wound even while the blade was still in it. He is my hero. My older brother inspired my dream, that one day I could be a pro, too. I won't forgive you. I'll kill you. Stain, for his part, wasn't impressed with the rhetoric, pointing a finger toward the injured native. Shouldn't you be more worried about that guy? His words took Tenya off guard, his eyes darting over to the pro. So busy with your grudge that you forgot about him. You plan on using your quirk only for yourself. You're about as far away from being a hero as I can imagine. Taking his sword out from Tenya's shoulder, he brought the blade up to his mouth with a sinister grin. And that's why you'll die tonight. He licked the blood off the blade, allowing his quirk to do the rest. Just like that, Tenya felt every part of his body stop. He wasn't numb, but he was still left totally paralyzed. My body, won't move. His eyes widened when he peered up, seeing Stain lift his sword directly above his head. Goodbye, child. May your death bring about a better world. No, please, not like this. Tenya's rage wasn't quelled, even in the face of death. Say what you want about me. You're still just a criminal who hurt my brother. But, just before Stain could make the finishing blow, something was caught in his peripheral vision. A green glow. He only just managed to turn his head before, SMAAAAASSHH. A powerful kick sent Stain sprawling back, the killer spinning through the air before managing to land on his feet. Much to Tenya's shock, a familiar figure stood over him, his signature green lightning sparking all across his body. M. Midoriya. How? Glancing down at him over his shoulder, Izuku reassured his friend. Don't worry, Iida. We're going to save you. Stain's eyes widened at the boy's appearance. It's him. The one from Shigaraki's photo. But then, Izuku's words finally processed in his mind. Wait, what does he mean by, we? Wham. Ak. Receiving his answer, something else slammed right into Stain's back, sending him into one of the alley walls with a hard thud. Ha. Huh. Nice work, kid. Mirko commended as she landed, the hero killer collecting himself across from her. With a wild grin, she gave Izuku a thumbs up. I've got him handled here. You get your pal out of here into a hospital, got it. M. Mirko. Tenya whispered. W. Where did she come from? Izuku turned around and knelt in front of Tenya, inspecting his wounds. Would you believe I'm interning under her? Anyway, we've gotta get you out of here. Can you walk? N. No. I can't move my body. Tenya answered, trembling as he attempted to move any muscle. It must be his quirk. Since he stabbed me, I've been paralyzed. His eyes widening, Izuku snapped back toward Mirko and Stain, who by this point were going one-on-one -on -one in a no-holds-barred fight. The rabbit hero was successfully kicking all of the hero killer's knives away and right back at him, though he masterfully caught them without so much as receiving a scratch. That's the kind of quirk people on TV said he might have. Izuku pondered to himself. So cutting activates his power, huh? Tenya, however, had more pressing questions. How did you even find me? Or know where the hero killer might be? I saw it on TV. They had some stats about the hero killer that went over how most of his victims were found where there weren't many people. He shifted his eyes down to Tenya as he went to pick him up. So in order to find you, we needed to search away from the panic. Don't worry, the Autobots are here and they're dealing with the Nomu as we speak. The Autobots, A and Nomu. Tenya echoed, his expression hardening a bit. So one of them was watching me, Strongarm. Izuku's brows furrowed back at his friend. Yeah, and you'd better have a good excuse for why, wait. The Greenette's eyebrows snapped up at the sight of Native, who was still bleeding out from the shoulder. Oh no, another pro. Why yes. Iida replied shamefacedly, decidedly taking his eyes off of Native. Stain was about to kill him before I showed up. Tightening his lips, Izuku contemplated on what to do next. If it was just Iida, I could have picked him up and carried him away myself. But now. URK. Broken out of his thoughts by a sudden shout, Izuku whirled back around, and was left horrified by the sight of Mirko frozen in place, balanced on one leg right in the middle of a thrust kick. Somehow, she was capable of maintaining that balance. Gur, damn you. You actually got a hit on me. The hero killer smiled sadistically as he cleaned one of his smaller knives off, stepping closer with his sword at the ready. 
Rumi Yusugiyama, the rising star known as Mirko, his grin disappeared and was replaced by a contemptuous scowl. You are one of the worst examples of a fake hero I've ever seen. You live a life of pilgrimage while hunting down criminals wherever you go, but you treat it more as a sport than anything else. Mirko snarled up at him, her red eyes glaring right into his. You mean like how you do the same only you kill pro heroes. I do what I do to keep people like you from being a problem. If that's so, then why do you continually reject the help of others? Stain fired back, lifting his sword directly above the small of her back. You view fighting criminals as a test of strength, and that any sort of help offered to you is seen as a sign of weakness. Despite her dire position, Mirko just kept her scowl, not letting up for a second. If your so-called strength is all you care about in regards to being a hero, then you are not worthy to bear the name. Stop. Before Stain could even think of stabbing Mirko through her spine, Izuku's shout brought everything to a halt. Everyone's attention was now solely on him, with Mirko's grimace becoming slightly panicked. No, kid, don't do it. Midoriya, please, don't get involved. Tenya pleaded from the ground. This doesn't have anything to do with you. This made Izuku do a double take. Iida, what are you saying? HMPH, you showed up to save your friend's life. You even made a big entrance. Stain mused as he swiped his sword toward his soon-to-be victims. But I have a duty to kill him and these would-be heroes. When your friend chose to fight me, it guaranteed that the weaker of us will be called. So, what will you do? The hero killer and Izuku locked eyes, the latter stunned to see the conviction behind them. This guy isn't playing around. Those are the eyes of a fanatic. Pulling his phone out from behind him, Izuku sent his location out to everyone in the 1A group chat, hoping that at least one of them would understand the situation, and silently praying that Kyoko wouldn't throttle him later. Listen to me, Tenya continued, stand down, run away, I told you this has nothing to do with you. But the engine user's words went unheeded. If anything, Izuku just used his statement to counter itself. If you really believe that, then why are you trying to become a hero in the first place? He heard a gasp from Iida, knowing that he had gotten through on some level. There are plenty of things I want to say, but they'll have to wait. All Might was right about one thing, thought. Raising his fists and taking a defensive stance, Izuku prepared for battle against the hero killer. Meddling when you don't need to is the essence of being a hero. Mirko blinked in surprise. Whoa, kid. For his part, something had suddenly been ignited within Stain, his lips tugging back in an eager, demented grin. This boy was invoking the name and advice of All Might himself. Perhaps there was hope for the future of heroism. All the same, he couldn't forget his current mission, and that involved taking this boy down. But I won't kill him. Stain vowed to himself. He gets to live, raising his sword, Stain proclaimed, good. As Izuku dashed right at him, intent on getting close. Stain quickly took note of this and quickly went for one of his side blades, but right as he swiped, Izuku rushed straight under his legs, avoiding the attack. Faster than I thought, Stain whipped around and brought his sword down for a clean slash. But not fast anew, he was proven wrong when his sword struck nothing but air, Izuku nowhere in sight. What? He disappeared? No. A flash of green above him alerted the hero killer to Izuku having leapt over his head, performing a somersault in the process. Gritting his teeth and unfurling his body, Izuku extended a single leg as he came down on stain. Here goes. A 10%. Polyhex, SMAAAASSSHHH. Delivering a powerful axe kick straight onto the killer, Izuku tumbled and landed in a crouch behind him, stain now sprawled across the ground. Ha! Huh, it worked. It worked. Shoot style actually were. URK. A paralyzing feeling suddenly came over Izuku, leaving him motionless on his hands and knees. M my body. Did he cut me and I didn't even notice. Sure enough, one look to his left and Izuku saw a very small cut in his hero costume, with blood trickling from the wound. One graze was all it took. Izuku wondered as he saw Stain stand back up, and that one of his blades was dripping with his blood. The realization hit him fast and hard, it's the blood. You're not powerful enough, Stain said bluntly, walking away from Izuku and back toward Tenya. It's not that you predicted my movements. You just left my field of vision and maneuvered so that you'd be able to get a clean shot. 
A fair tactic, but I saw through your plan. The hero killer spared Izuku a glance over his shoulder. There are countless false heroes around here who are all talk, but I think you're worthy of staying alive. You're different from these three. Pointing his sword straight down to eat his head, Izuku and Mirko could only watch in utter horror. No, please. Izuku cried out. He's just a child. Mirko roared. Stop it. Get away from him. But then, just as Stain was about to plunge his blade down, a burning orange glow came billowing from further down the alley, and then shot out straight at the hero killer, forcing him to back off. Izuku, Mirko, Tenya and Native were left stunned, bringing their sights around to the source of the flames. There, a lone figure stood, his right side covered in chilling ice, and the left in blazing fire. Midoriya, you need to give more details in times like this. Holding up his phone, Shoto Todoroki revealed that he'd gotten Izuku's message, the half-cold half-hot user keeping his eyes directly on the hero killer. I was almost too late to stop this guy. Tenya was flabbergasted. Now two of his classmates had found him. Why you too, Todoroki? As was Mirko, but she was more impressed than anything. Ha, huh, nice entrance, kid. Way to make the save. How'd you get here? Izuku followed up, only to notice the flames coming from his friend. W wait, you're using your left side. Shoto echoed Izuku's inquiry back at him. How'd I get here? Good question. Your message took me a while to figure out. Next time, try to send more than just your location. Izuku offered a guilty smile in response, but Shoto simply narrowed his eyes at Stain. But you're not one to send cryptic messages without reason, are you? Shifting his right foot forward, Shoto sent a wave of ice out toward across the alley, forcing the hero killer to leap away while the ice raised Izuku, Native and Mirko up so that they could slide down toward him. Unfortunately, this also caused Mirko to fall flat on her face, the cold, unforgiving ground leaving her nettled. Grr, as if it couldn't get worse today, huh? But as she landed, she felt her fingers start to twitch, which got her attention rather quick. Wait, how? I figured you were in trouble and asking for help. Shoto went on, giving a nod to Izuku before rushing forward, sending his flames out at the hero killer. It's gonna be okay. More pros will be here any minute. Stain avoided the fire blasts with ease, though, grumbling irritably. HMPH, and so who are you? You have a familiar aura, but I can't quite place it. He glared without remorse at the young man. No matter. You'll fall just like the rest. You're just what they said you were. Shoto retorted, unflinching, but you won't be taking any more lives, hero killer. Todoroki, wait. Izuku piped up, warning his friend. You can't let that guy get your blood. I I think he controls his enemies by swallowing it. That's how he got us. Shoto lifted his arms, preparing himself for battle. So he ingests blood to keep people from moving. All I've gotta do is keep by distance and... SNKT asterisk while he wasn't paying attention, Stain threw a small knife straight at Shoto's head. Thankfully, the boy reacted quick enough to pull his head away, but his cheek was still grazed. But then, Stain once again jumped into the air, bringing one of his blades in for a precision strike. You have good friends, Ingenium. Or you did. But just as he brought it down, Shoto created an ice wall to block it. That wasn't the end of it, though, with Shoto noticing the distinct lack of a certain weapon on the killer. Snapping his head up, Shoto saw the long blade spinning in midair. He must have thrown it at the same time as the knife, ah. Once again taking advantage of the distraction, Stain grabbed Shoto by the collar and went to lick the wound on his cheek, but Shoto's left side burst into flames before he could, forcing another retreat. Just stop it. Tenya said as Shoto continuously kept Stain back with fire and ice combo attacks. Why are you doing this? His fight is with M.E. He tried so desperately to move, only to do little more than just a slight tremble. I inherited my brother's name. I'm the one who should stop him. The hero killer is mine. Huh, so you're Ingenium now. Strange. Shoto responded, sending out another volley of ice spires. The Ingenium I knew before never had that look on his face. For the first time that night, Tenya's dark scowl let up, hearing his classmates' words. You've got a dark side. Guess my family isn't the only one. Izuku was still trying to move, calling out to his friend. Careful, Todoroki, huh? Just then, he felt his fingers twitch, much to his surprise. Ah, 
Good. And just like that, Izuku managed to turn his head, seeing Mirko mere inches away from him. I was wondering if you'd get up, too. Come on, let's nix this clown. Back at the fight, Shoto's latest ice wall was broken through with multiple slashes from Stain's sword, the killer jumping through the air again. Ya blocked your own field of vision against an opponent who's faster than you. Rookie mistake. Shoto wasn't deterred, however, bringing up his left arm for another blazing inferno. Come and get me, then. However, he was stopped when Stain threw two folding knives, both of them stabbing into Shoto's forearm. Gah. You're good kid, in the blink of an eye, Stain was now going straight after the downed native, who was still helpless and immovable. Unlike him. But, just as he was about to reach the hero. Lunar Rocket. Polyhex SMAAAASSSHH. WHAAM. Taken aback, Shoto watched as both the rabbit hero and Deku burst forward in a double flying kick, smashing the hero killer into a wall and drag his face across it. Midoriya. Mirko. I'm not sure why, but we're able to move now. Izuku explained. Don't question it, just keep kicking. Mirko encouraged. Shoto let that information sink in. Hmm, so he has a time limit. No, native piped up, garnering his attention. Mirko and the kid should have been the last ones to be freed. I still can't move a muscle. Meanwhile, Stain was kicking himself for not getting the job done sooner. They must be type O. He fell backwards out of the duo's flying kicks and fell to the ground, where the mentor and student followed after him. That wouldn't remain the case for long as Shoto prepared another attack. You two, back here, now. Following the advice, Mirko and Izuku bounced back as another wave of ice blasted into Stain, forcing him away as well. Now regrouped, Mirko wiped away the blood that was trickling down from her ear, asking, Okay, so anyone wanna take a guess as to why we were the last ones frozen but the first to be freed? I've got three. Izuku offered, not taking his eyes off the hero killer for a moment. First, his quirk could be less effective the more people he uses it on. Second, the amount ingested could play into how long it works. Or third, there could be a difference depending on a person's blood type. If it's the latter, then my blood type is B. I I'm type A, Iida uttered. Mirko wore a surprised smile to her protege. Huh, you type O, too, then kid. Izuku put on a sheepish grin and rubbed his neck. Ah, ha, I I guess I am. Stain's grin came back, though it was more sarcastic than anything. So you figured it out. Bravo, very impressive. The three standing combatants scowled back in his direction, with Izuku making another point. Well, I guess it doesn't really help much knowing how his quirk works. I thought we could hurry and carry these two out of here, but it's no good. Shoto concluded. He's too fast. He can avoid ice and fire. If we make any attempt to leave, he'd just cut us off. Our best option is to hold until the others arrive. He sent a serious gaze over to Mirko in particular. The only problem is, I'd have to leave myself unguarded, and we'd have to avoid close combat. Not a problem, kid. Mirko insisted. You've already lost way too much blood. You stay back and give a supporting cover. She rested a hand on Izuku's shoulder. Listen, Deku, I might not be much of a team player, but I know how to take advantage of the numbers game. We'll keep him distracted while Icy Hot back there works his magic, got it. Deku wasted no time in bringing up full cowling. Right, got it, time to get serious. Reaching into his utility belt, Izuku pulled out his red scarf and tied it around his neck in one swift movement, the garment flowing through the breeze before he brought up his respirator to cover his face. Let's go. And just like that, Izuku's helmet transformed and covered his entire head, its segmented eyes flashing to life and glowing red in the darkness of the alleyway. Shoto, Tenya, Native and even Stain were left flabbergasted at what they saw, all while Mirko gave the boy a thumbs up. Hell yeah, kid. Now we're talking. Midoriya, Shoto uttered. When did you, become a common rider? Deku's head fell forward, placing his hand to his helmet in exasperation. I didn't, Todoroki, it's just an homage. But a very good homage. Mirko supported with a pat to the shoulder. That said, Ya could have at least said, Henshin, before putting the helmet on. Suddenly, the heroine struck a pose, bringing a fist down at her side while holding her other hand out straight, crossing it over her chest at a diagonal angle. 
Plus, you should have done a super cool transformation pose, too. That lets your enemies know you mean business. Could we please stick to the program? Deku begged, now thoroughly embarrassed. Despite himself, Stain smirked in amusement, but agree with the young man's words. I suggest you listen to your writer friend there. Watching Deku face fall to the ground, Stain's demeanor went back to being serious. Three against one, this fight won't be easy. Focusing back on the topic at hand, Shoto carefully pulled the knives out of his arm, throwing them to the side. Right, let's do this. We're taking a big risk, but, collecting themselves, the two boys and rabbit hero stood steadfast in front of Tenya and Native. We'll protect them. And just like that, Mirko and Deku shot off, bounding across the alley walls around the hero killer as Shoto let loose more waves of ice. Stain slashed his way through the frozen pillars, but was taken off guard at his back, where Mirko and Izuku came in for another double flying kick. This time, however, Stain caught them out the corner of his eye, and leapt out of the way so that he was now behind them. Before he could take out another knife and slice at the duo, however, another wall of ice cut him off, along with a burst of flame that forced him back again. Mirko and Deku went back in for another strike, this time intent on crisscrossing over Stain with a pair of kicks from his sides. Unfortunately, Stain was able to avoid that as well, and as the two were flying past him, he took up his knives and made small cuts in their legs. He also made sure to trip Deku up in the process, causing him to crash land into some trash cans. Stain was about to make the finishing blow, but Mirko acted quickly and lunged at him with yet another kick. Get in the game, Deku. Mirko said. We've got a, URK. But just like that, she was frozen again, falling to the ground on her stomach. Gah. Damn it. Mirko. Ah. Before Deku could even think of getting up, he too felt the paralyzing sting, leaving him slumped against the wall motionless. No. Watching the fight from the ground, however, Iida couldn't have felt worse. All of this was happening, because of him. It made him reflect on everything, from Stain's words to him, Izuku's vow to save him, Todoroki's resolve, and even his own rage. He hated watching this. He couldn't stand it anymore. You have to run, I can't, watch this. Clenching his teeth, Shoto knew what he had to do. You want to make your brother proud. Exclamation mark quote. He raised his voice, taking Tenya back. It was quite rare to hear the fire and ice user at such a volume. Sending out another blast of ice at Stain, Shoto protected Izuku and Mirko, effectively shielding them from the hero killer. Then stand up and be ingenium. Unfortunately, Stain wasted no time in cutting through the ice, his warped smile increasing as he closed in on Shoto, whose left side erupted into flames. Become the hero he wanted you to be. As everything seemed to slow down, Tenya thought back to the words he said before. I am ingenium, and I will defeat you. That, I promise. But at the same time, he felt a sense of remorse come crashing down entirely upon him, silently crying to himself. Can I call myself a hero? My friends are protecting me. They're bleeding for me. He managed to catch sight of the man he so loathed as Shoto fended him off. Stain, the hero killer. I took my brother's name so I could teach this villain a lesson. But I was so consumed by revenge that I forgot about what really mattered. I was too focused on myself to help anyone else. You spoke the truth, hero killer. These two are different from me. I'm immature. I can't hold a candle to them. Tenya wanted to clench his fist in frustration, and his fingers started to move. But still. Has anyone ever told you that you rely on your quirk too much? Stain shouted as he dashed through the fire and ice onslaught. Makes you a careless fighter. In a single second, Shoto found the hero killer directly in front of him, his blade mere inches from slicing directly through his left arm. No. Mirko growled. Kid, move. Todoroki. Deku's eyes were wide with fear. It couldn't end like this. But unbeknownst to both of them, a certain blue-haired young man had stood up, and his engines were powering up to full blast. If I don't stand up now, I'll never be able to be as good as them. I'll never live up to my brother's name. With that thought in his mind, Tenya Iida, the engine hero, Ingenium, blasted straight at the hero killer with a massive kick. Recipro, burst. K-R-C-H-N-K. Just like that, Stain's sword was broken in half, leaving the killer with only a short, dull part of the blade left. 
It was quickly followed up with another powerful kick to Stain's gut, sending him flying down the alleyway. Deku was smiling from ear to ear under his helmet. Iida. Ha ha ha. Nice one, kid. Mirko cheered. You're free, too. Todoroki mused. Guess his quirk isn't as great as I thought it was. Todoroki, Murdoria. Tenya lowered his head shamefully. This had nothing to do with you. I apologize. While no one saw it on his face, the group could hear Izuku's disapproval just by his tone of voice. Come on, not this again. Despite his left arm starting to feel numb, though, Ingenium remained unwavering. I'm okay. And I won't let any of you shed any more blood for me. It's no use trying to pretend you're a hero now. Stain uttered bitterly, his rage beginning to boil as blood dripped from his hand. A person's true nature doesn't change just in a few minutes. You'll never be anything but a fraud who prioritizes his own desires. His glare at Tenya grew intense as his eyes became bloodshot. You're the sickness that's infected society and ruined the name, hero. Someone must teach you a lesson. Shoto wasn't impressed, sneering at the man's venom-laced words. You're a fundamentalist lunatic. Iida, don't listen to this murderer's nonsense. Number. Tenya uttered. He's completely correct. I have no right to call myself a hero, at all. His words left Shoto and Deku shaken, but even as blood continued to run down his arm, Tenya scowled right back at Stain. Even so, there's no way I can back down. If I give up now, then the name, Ingenium, will die. The hero killer's eyes were practically glowing red with anger at this point. Pathetic. He made a move forward, but Shoto wasted no time in getting in front of Ingenium, protecting him with a point-blank fire blast. Idiots. Native cried out from his place on the pavement. The hero killer is only after me and the kid in the white armor. Stop fighting back, just get out of here. Wow, guy, you really gotta get a grip. Mirko deadpanned, her eyes shifting up to see Stain perched on one of his own knives that he stuck in the wall. Besides, I don't think he'd let us run even if we wanted to. Shoto nodded in agreement, right when Stain leapt away. She's right. Something's clearly changed in him just now. He seems rattled. Sending out another surge of ice, Shoto intended on slowing the killer down, but with amazing acrobatic feats, Stain managed to dodge and slice through everything thrown at him. Seeing this, Shoto thought over everything to try and formulate some sort of plan. His quirk alone isn't especially powerful. The issue of blood type makes it unpredictable and it doesn't last long. Plus, he has to get in close if he wants to use it. It must be difficult for him to take on multiple opponents at once. Switching sides again, Shoto let out even more firepower, but the murderer just darted further to his left to avoid the blast and get at Ingenium at the same time. But Shoto wouldn't let that happen. He's desperate, trying to kill Iida and that other hero before the pros show up. Such tenacity. As Shoto once again blocked Stain off with fire, Ingenium tried to start his engines back up, intent on getting in the fight, but all he got was a mere sputter. Crap. My engines are shot. Did I break the radiator with that one kick? Racking his brain, it didn't take long for Tenya to come up with a plan. Todoroki. Can you regulate your temperatures? Not well with my left, but yes, I can. You gotta freeze my leg for me. Ingenium explained, making Shoto do a double take. But without plugging the exhausts. Unfortunately, this brief distraction allowed Stain to close in again, taking out another folding knife. You're in the way. He threw it as hard as he could at Shoto's face, only for Ingenium to jump in and take the hit to his right bicep. No, Iida, huh. All at once, Izuku regained movement in his body, almost falling over himself trying to get to his friends. Mirko was up as well, wearing a wild grin. Haha, yes, not gonna let that happen again. Moving across the alley to her student, she helped him up to his feet. You okay, kid? How's your leg? F fine, I think. Peering down and lifting his leg up, Deku found that it was only a minor cut near his ankle. He didn't get me too deep. I think focusing on two of us at the same time might have thrown him off. Awesome. So you know how we gotta finish this, right? Taking her words to heart, Izuku brought up full cowling, the antennae on his helmet glowing bright green with it. Right, hit him fast, hit him hard, don't give him any time to recover. I was gonna say with a good old-fashioned rider kick, but EH, same thing. Izuku lowered his head with a sigh. 
Should have seen that coming. Let's go. Back at the fight, Stain's rage was boiling over, taking out a larger, more serrated blade and throwing it at the two students. Why won't you just stay down? The blade stabbed itself straight into Ingenium's forearm, even piercing through the metal bracer with enough force to send the young man to the pavement. Ida, But Tenya cut Shoto off. Just do it. Hurry. Following his instructions, Shoto placed his hand on Tenya's left leg, freezing over his boot only so much so that the exhaust pipes were still exposed. It's done. Revving his engines, Tenya let them puff out more black smoke as he reached for the blade embedded in his arm, using his teeth to pull it out. Thank you, Todoroki. I will fight, with or without my arms. Standing up, Ingenium's engines burst to life and propelled him straight up, intent on a collision course with the hero killer. Recipro, Extend. One for all, full cowling, concentrating hard, Izuku attempted to muster up a little more power from his quirk for this final blow. 15%. Pumping his legs, Izuku launched himself straight into the air, so much so that he actually went above Stain and Ieda. Catching himself on the wall, Izuku pushed himself off and extended one leg down, bringing the other leg back for a flying kick as he shouted, Praxis, S-M-A-A-A-A-S-S-H-H-H. Shoto smiled, watching his friends careen toward the hero killer. Go guys! With two powerful strikes from above and below, Deku and Ingenium's boots collided with Stain's face and midsection respectively, sending him spiraling as his eyes rolled into the back of his head. Shoto was about to make a finishing move of his own, but Stain collected himself quickly, snapping his hand out and grabbing his falling sword to swipe it at Ida's head, but the wild swing only to sliced off a bit of his blue hair. I, no, W.E. will defeat you, Stain. Ingenium proclaimed, all while a shadow passed over them all. Because you are a criminal, and we are heroes. Stain gasped and whipped his head around, just in time to see Mirko's silhouette backed against the moon, the rabbit hero spinning in midair before falling straight toward him with a kick of her own. Lunar, landing. Her foot landed straight into Stain's stomach, causing him to cough up blood, and allowing Shoto's next burst of flame to finish the job. The half-cold half-hot user created an ice slide for his friends to land safely on, all while bringing up an ice pillar for Stain to crash on. Merkel landed next to him in a defensive position, though Deku and Ingenium's landing was much less comfortable. All the same, Shoto urged them to stand up. Keep fighting, we can't let him get away. Uh, kid, don't think that's necessary. Merkel pointed out, relaxing immediately when she saw Stain's limp body sprawled over the jagged ice. I think we got him. Yeah, Izuku deactivated his helmet and stood up, keeping his eyes trained on Stain. But for Tenya, he remained on the ground, still comprehending what they had just achieved. He's gotta be out after all that, right? Hmm, then let's restrain him. Shoto said, scanning across the area. Try to find some rope and wheel. You, a collective gasp came from the four and their sights zeroed in on Stain slowly reaching for another one of his blades before he lunged out at them, albeit weakly. You 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 you. Choom. Everything seemed to go into slow motion with what happened next. Out of the darkness of the alley, a bright, bluish-green light suddenly erupted into a swirling vortex, taking everybody off guard. Out of all of them, though, Izuku and Tenya were the only ones who knew what this meant, but it still left them astonished to see it. How? How did they know where to find them? That was a question they would have to ask later as, from out of the ground bridge, a certain yellow beetle came charging through, ramming himself right into the flying hero killer and taking them both across the alley. And then. W-H-R-R-T-S-C-Z-Z-T-S-C-Z-Z-T-S-C-Z-Z-C-H-K-T. Shoto and Mirko were left wide-eyed and slack-jawed at what happened. The yellow beetle that both of them had seen before, had transformed into a 13-foot-tall robot, who grabbed the stunned Stain by the midsection and drove him straight into a wall, and then directly into the pavement. Several times. Zerked. Don't. Mess. With my. Friends. By the end of his pummeling session, Bumblebee left the hero killer embedded in the ground, now thoroughly unconscious. Backing away, Bumblebee exhaled from his vents, calming himself down, before pumping his fists into the air with a victorious fanfare from his radio. ZRKT. Hooray, I did the teeing. Right in the middle of his celebration, he turned around, only to realize that it wasn't just Izuku and Tenya there, cutting his celebration short. 
Mirko, Shoto, and even Native were completely speechless, not knowing what to do as they just stared at him. And Izuku could only facepalm. Of course this had to happen. B, you have the worst possible timing I've ever seen. Zerked. Uh, Bumblebee put his hand to his neck. My bad. Chapter 54, Hosu Climax, Autobots and Heroes vs. Nomu. Comma dot dot, Izuku Midoriya wanted to die. He wanted to just find a hole in the middle of nowhere, curl up into a ball, and perish. Well, okay, that was probably a little extreme, but at the moment, his insides were twisting and churning as his anxiety practically went through the roof. It had happened again, again, for what had to be at least the fifth or sixth time, he couldn't keep track at this point, the secret had gotten out. And now Todoroki, Mirko, and even Native were staring at the 13-foot-tall, bright yellow robot whom he supposedly called his best friend. Okay, again, a bit harsh, but after witnessing Bumblebee just pummel stain right into the pavement, there was no going back from something like that. All he could do was facepalm and shake his head. B, you have the worst possible timing I've ever seen. ZRKT, ah, my bad. Bumblebee shrugged guiltily. To say the least, Izuku deadpanned, glancing to Tenya as he slowly struggled to his feet. But hey, at least it wasn't Strongarm who came in. Otherwise, you would have been chewed out immediately. I am aware, yes. Iida grunted, wincing at the reminder and the numbing pain in his arms. I suppose I'll have to brace myself for that when the time comes. He peered past his shoulder, only to be met with the eyes of their comrades slowly trailing toward them. B but what do we do now? We can't go back on this. Izuku sighed and shook his head. No, we can't. You're right. A sigh escaped his lips before he turned to their classmate and his mentor. Gee guys, there's something you should. Ah. Before he could even get to an explanation, Native let out a scream as he suddenly jumped to his feet, able to move once again. I I'm free. F finally free. His eyes grew wide with panic as he saw the robot again and he ran off as best he could, decidedly away from Bumblebee. W we need to get out of here. Th that killer robot's gonna. Lunar Strike. Leaping in front of him, Mirko performed a picture-perfect thrust kick straight to the hero's head, knocking him out instantly and sending him careening into a pile of trash cans. The students and Bumblebee were left dumbstruck at the move, but Mirko simply went over and gave him an apologetic pat on the head. Sorry, man, but someone like you probably shouldn't have seen that. Shoto furrowed his brow. Will, he be alright? Should be, but he definitely won't have any memory of this when he wakes up. Collecting herself, the rabbit hero spun around on her heel, her sights locking onto her protege. Now, Deku, in a single bound, Mirko was suddenly nose to nose with the boy, making him yelp. You wanna tell us what the hell is going on here? Approaching the two as well, Shoto kept his own suspicious gaze directly on Tenya. Iida, you seem to know what's going on here as well. Care to explain? Izuku rushed to his friend's defense, raising his arms at the questioning duo. Oh okay, everyone, let's all just calm ourselves down for a second. I promise, there's a very good and reasonable explanation for all of this. Mirko pursed her lips and crossed her arms, waiting expectantly for an answer. Shifting his eyes to Shoto, Izuku saw the half-cold half-hot user raise a brow at him, eager to hear the follow-up as well. Izuku swallowed and stammered out, a and to be perfectly honest with you, he snapped his arms over, gesturing toward Bumblebee. He's an alien. A long, silent pause followed, with Mirko and Shoto's eyes widening at the answer. The two craned their heads between B and the others before Mirko jerked a thumb up to him. An alien. This robot pal of yours who just beat the hero killer into the ground is, an alien. ZRKT, ya got me dead to rights. Bumblebee replied, taking Mirko by surprise with his southern drawl, only to then switch to a city accent. And, let me tell ya, toots, ZRKT, you can, ZRKT, handle the truth. Whoa ho, does, does he talk like that? Pretty much, Izuku confirmed, walking over and placing a hand on B's leg. Bumblebee here had his voice box damaged a long time ago by an enemy bot, and we've taught him to string together sentences through his radio. Shoto tilted his head. His name's, Bumblebee. Izuku wore a sheepish smile at that. Ah, hee hee, yeah, we named him. Ah, that's actually kinda adorable. 
Mirko cooed, only to realize something. H hold on, does that Brian friend of yours also know that his car is an alien? The question made Izuku smirk up to Bumblebee, who gave him a thumbs up. Yeah, about that, W H R R T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z C H K T asterisk Izuku sidestepped away as Bumblebee transformed, leaving Mirko and Shoto in awe once again, but their jaws dropped even more when Brian himself flickered into existence behind the wheel of the car, the door opening by himself before he stepped out, becoming entirely solid in moments. He kind of is Brian. I it's the name he goes by when he's fully incognito. You're a hologram. Mirko thrust her hand out and poked Brian in the shoulder, only for him to recoil at the jab. B but, wait, you're solid. He and others of his kind utilize hard light hollow matter avatars, or holoforms, for short, to appear human while in their disguises. Tenya explained, limping over to the group. It's quite the brilliant use of technology, really. But Shoto was laser focused on one single word that Tenya used. Others, you're saying that there are more of him. Izuku, B and Tenya shared an awkward glance, the greenette replying, yeah, about a dozen or so, give or take a few smaller ones here and there. He rubbed his neck sheepishly. A and that's not even counting the Decepticons number. Decepticons. Mirko repeated, lurching forward in confusion. Okay, what the heck is even going on? I feel like we're missing a lot of pieces to the puzzle here. Raising his hands, Izuku stammered in an attempt to explain better. Why you're right, you're right, I'm sorry. I I really should explain from the start, he pointed up toward Bumblebee as he transformed back to robot mode. So, firstly, I found B almost a year ago now and we had him repaired. Then, after that, more of his kind, Autobots, began gathering on Earth when they detected his signal come back online. Autobots and Decepticons all belong to an alien race called Cybertronians, from the planet Cybertron, and they've been fighting one another in a civil war over ideologies and their planet's energy supply that's been going on for eons. Mirko and Shoto listened intently at Izuku's account, the latter especially intrigued. Alien robots fighting a war against one another for control over their planet. It sounds like something out of a science fiction novel, but then, his eyebrows rose up in realization. Wait, so is that where you and the others have been going after school every day? To help these Autobots fight in a war. Once again, Izuku's hand went to his neck, giving a nervous laugh. Aha, uh -huh, W well, sometimes. B but most of the time it's just for training. TH they offered to help us prepare for the sports festival, actually. Wait, Shoto's lips parted, the realization hitting him even harder. Those people who joined Class A in their booth, A and Orion Pax, they were. Yes, all Autobots, Tenya affirmed, taking to their holoforms to watch the sports festival in person. Orion Pax in particular is actually the leader of the Autobots. Izuku went on, and his actual name is Optimus Prime. Shoto's brow furrowed, I see, so that means you don't have two dads then. Izuku fell flat on his face, all while Mirko couldn't help but laugh at her pupil's expense. But Izuku didn't waste any time snapping back up, shouting, now where the hell would you ever get an idea like that? I already told you I'm not All Might's secret love child, what more do you want? HMPH, I suppose it doesn't matter anymore in any case. Shoto resigned. It kinda matters to M.E., Todoroki. Before anything could start. Tenya hobbled between the two of them. Please, that's enough. No need for squabbles after we've already been through enough. On that note, he stood up as straight as he could before bowing to both of his classmates. Midoriya, Todoroki, I, I I'm so sorry. I caused both of you so much pain tonight. I, he started to tear up. I I was just so angry. After what happened to my brother, I was consumed by nothing but rage and the desire for revenge. I couldn't see anything else, and, a and, Tenya tightened his fists as he snapped his head back up. I can only beg for your forgiveness. Midoriya, I should have been more honest with you. With everyone, I know there's nothing I can do to take it back now, but. Izuku raised his hand, stopping Tenya mid-sentence. Iida, please. I, I know you must have been suffering. But if anything, I should be the one apologizing to you for not making more of an effort to help. B shifted awkwardly, his hand rubbing his neck. ZRKT, I'm afraid, 
ZRKT, we're all at fault on that one. ZRKT, sorry there, chief. Midoriya, Bumblebee, choking back a sob, Tenya's head lowered back down again in shame. I don't deserve friends like you, or the others, or even Strongarm. Don't say that. Izuku shook his head, with Bumblebee following suit. We just, there were mistakes made on all ends here, Ieda. But don't worry. He approached his armored friend, setting a hand on his shoulder. We're going to make things right going forward. Shoto nodded in agreement. Midori is right. And pull yourself together, okay. You're the class rep, after all. Ieda lowered his head, wiping his tears on his sleeve. All right. And, be prepared to get a stern talking to from Strongarm and Prime later. Izuku noted as well, they're definitely gonna want to talk with you. Letting out a nervous breath, Tenya gave an accepting nod. Of course, thank you, Midoriya. You're welcome. But that being said, wop, ah. Tenya recoiled at the sudden smack across the top of his head, throwing him from a loop as he gaped at Izuku disbelievingly. W what was that for? I thought. Kyoka told me to do that. Izuku replied with a sly grin. She said you could use a good smack. Tenya initially pursed his lips in annoyance, but ultimately relented with his shoulders sagging. Ha, huh, I suppose I had that coming. He managed to smile back to him. Tell her thank you, and that I'll try to have better judgment in the future. Izuku placed his hands on his hips. You can tell her that yourself when you see her again. I've got a feeling that everyone's gonna have some words with you once they find out about this. That said, he trailed off as his sights zeroed in on the unconscious hero killer. We should probably get him restrained and bring him in before he wakes up. Mirko was quick to agree. Yeah, kid's got a point. Everyone, help me find some rope and we'll get him out to the streets. But then, she whipped around and pointed up to B. And as for you, Bumblebee, you need to get back to, wherever it is you came from before someone else sees you. We're in the middle of a crowded city and we don't need to risk any more people seeing you. Right, especially since Prime, Strongarm, Springer and Red Alert are already here trying to deal with those Nomu. Izuku affirmed. That made Tenya and Shoto do a double take. W wait, they're here. H how? Apparently, a hero called, Spectrum, is leading them on a mission as a facade for Sector 7's MASK division. Believe me, not even I'm caught up to speed on this, but at the very least, they're maintaining their disguises so far. Izuku raised an eyebrow over to Bumblebee. Which leads me to ask, how did you even know where to find us, B? ZRKT, a little birdie, ZRTK, got your text. B answered with a wink. ZRKT, then she called US and said, ZRTK, get a move on. He prodded a finger to Izuku's chest. ZRKT, also, she, ZRKT, has some choice words, ZRKT, for you, partner. Izuku's eyes widened when he realized what that meant. Kyoka had received his location text, and she wasted no time in calling the Autobot base to get back up to him. And this was right after he had told her that he'd be safe. Oh god, Kyoka's gonna kill me. More than likely. Tenya mused. MMHM. Shoto nodded. Guys, come on. Try and support me here, huh? Izuku cried out in fear. Shoto, returning to his search for rope, shrugged it off. Midoriya, I am far from an expert on women and even I know not to get caught up in another couple's affairs. You can handle Jiro's wrath on your own. Izuku blushed, countering with, we're not a couple. From across the alley, Mirko raised a finger and shouted, yet, much to Izuku's chagrin. Running his fingers through his hair, Izuku leaned against a wall, shaking his head. Great, I'm dead, he craned his head back to his yellow friend. Could you at least tell her I'm safe? Maybe then I'll have some semblance of myself intact after she gets her hands on me. ZRTK, copy that, good buddy, ZRKT, I'm rolling out. Placing his finger up to his head, Bumblebee activated his cum link, contacting the base. ZRKT, ready for pickup. Not two seconds later, the ground bridge opened up for him and he gave the group a salute before running through, leaving them to take care of the rest. Wait, Tenya piped up. If Red Alert is here, then, who's operating the ground bridge? Probably Hatsume. Izuku rationalized. She's gotten pretty good at it recently. That made Shoto's eyes widen a bit. Wait, 
Hatsume, the girl from the support course that you teamed up with during the sports festival. She's in on this whole thing, too. Izuku chuckled nervously and rubbed the back of his neck. Ah ha ha, why yeah, along with Kyoka, Yaoyorozu, Uraraka, Kirishima, Ishido, Kaminari, and a handful of students from Class 1B. Shoto was staring a hole through Izuku by this point, the amount of disbelief in his eyes unavoidable. Why yeah, I know, not the best at keeping this a secret from our peers, B but you should also know that a lot of the top 10 pros know about this secret as well, including your father. I see. Shoto tightened his lips for a moment, pondering over all of this. Well then, maybe it's best if he doesn't know that I know about it. H huh, Izuku exclaimed. Todoroki, what are you saying? Tenya inquired. Shoto crossed his arms, ignoring the pain in the one that had been stabbed into. Listen, if my father ever found out about me knowing about the Cybertronians, then he would practically never leave me alone. And that's definitely something that I don't want. He furrowed his brow seriously. That and I'd rather have a peaceful getaway where I don't have to deal with him, and wherever this base is must be fairly secluded, right? Izuku gave a shrug. I I mean, yeah, but we'll need to run everything by Optimus first. The half-cold half-hot user nodded in agreement. That's fine. In all honesty, I actually do want to talk with him again. He was very amicable in our first conversation. HM HM, that's Optimus for ya. Izuku agreed. Oi. Mirko called out, causing everyone to turn around and see the hero killer bounded up in a very long rope, his hands tied behind his back and all of his knives laid out on the ground. I've stripped Stain here of his weapons and got him tied up. Let's get him out to the streets so that the cops can take him in. She approached the three boys, eyeing Shoto and Tenya specifically. And then we're gonna get you boys to a freaking hospital. She craned her head toward Izuku next. Kid. Think you can lug native out of here? Without a second thought, Izuku went to do just that. Oh of course, on it. As he hefted native onto his back, the one for all user couldn't help but think to himself, we were lucky to make it out of this alive. The fight was probably only 10 minutes, but it felt like forever, he gave a nod to the others and they proceeded out of the alley, with one last thought lingering in Izuku's mind. I just hope Grand Torino and the Autobots are doing okay. Comma dot dot. 15 minutes earlier, the city of Hosu was in complete and utter chaos as monsters rampaged through the streets, sending civilians into a frenzy as they ran away for their lives. Of course, in their eyes, their initial reaction was to see them as villains, though even then, they could tell that something wasn't adding up. Between their twisted appearances and their mindless aggression, it was obvious that they were much different than the villains they usually saw. One of these, villains, a gray-skinned one with four eyes on its exposed brain, had been sent crashing into a building, and was just now starting to re-emerge. A group of people went screaming and instantly ran away, with one man shouting, a villain. Run. Before he could get far, though, one of the people, a woman next to him fell to the ground, her heels betraying her. He knelt down to help her up, but in doing so allowed the beast to close in. W where are all the pros? The Nomu raised its hand, ready to bring it down for a strike as the man shielded with woman with his body, but the blow never came. Instead, a wild and yellow blur made impact with the Nomu's body, sending it stumbling away with a pained roar. Rebounding and landing not too far away, Gran Torino said to himself, I haven't fought this earnestly in years. Picked a fine time to patrol. The Nomu roared and directed its attention to him, preparing to charge. That's right, bring it on, ugly. With a mighty jump, the Nomu brought its fists down, but Torino leapt out of the way a split second later, flying over its head. It's fast, but not faster than me, unfortunately, the monster caught sight of the two civilians from before, and began crawling its way to them. Seeing this, Torino redirected himself in midair. It's attacking at random. He extended a hand, shouting, stop it, you stupid beast. The very next second, however, F W O O O O S H. Gah. Torino backed off with a pump of his legs, staying away from the fire that suddenly engulfed the creature. The beast screeched in pain, but still remained perfectly still, and that's when a new voice entered the scene. I was searching for the elusive hero killer, but this thing will have to do. Gran Torino brought his eyes up and was astonished to see who was approaching. Thanks, old timer. 
I'm afraid I don't know you, but I can handle this from here on out. The civilians were left wide-eyed, both in awe and intimidation as the man came forward, his flames burning with such intensity that they could feel the heat even at their distance. Whoa, is that really, the man uttered. W what is he doing in Hosu? The woman trembled. As he stared down the beast before him, Endeavor wore a smug smile, silently reveling in the effect his presence had. Isn't it obvious? He replied. I came because I'm a hero. The Nomu suddenly shrieked and its body flexed, freeing it from the flames it had been engulfed in. Endeavor looked down curiously at it, his bravado forgotten as it twitched erratically. It was hurt, but it only had minor burns on it. That was only a low temperature warning shot. But still, it always coes my opponent. Gran Torino narrowed his eyes suspiciously. Something's not right. This guy is, gah. Gura. A high-pitched roar bellowed from the Nomu's throat as a massive blast of fire was ejected straight out of its body, forcing everyone to fall back. Everyone except Endeavor, who only felt a little warm. HMPH, so your quirk's absorption and release, but you still took damage from my flame. With a swipe of his hand, Endeavor dispelled the flames with ease. Not a very impressive power. The Nomu then began to convulse, which left Gran Torino confused as he landed on the side of a building. What's he doing? Watch it, Todoroki. I think this guy's got multiple quirks. No sooner had he said those words that the Nomu's body expanded and grew into a muscle-bound behemoth that leapt straight at Endeavor, intent on unleashing its strength on him. I see. So that's how it is, Endeavor lifted his hand, ready to ignite another hellflame. Those two bystanders got away, right? Taking a brief glance around, Torino didn't see the man and woman around anywhere, which was all he needed for him to take action again. Good. Let's put this rabid dog down. Right as Endeavor was about to unleash his fire, though, the Nomu opened its mouth, and its tongue morphed and expanded into a multi-tendrilled mass of pink muscle that burst out and went to attack him. But before it could, Gran Torino came blasting straight through the mass, putting a giant hole through it with a single kick. Rebounding off another wall, the old man came back around and slammed himself feet first into the Nomu's back, planting it into the street directly in front of Endeavor. Didn't mean to damage the road. Torino quipped. I might be more out of practice than I thought. For his part, Endeavor was admittedly impressed. Huh, nice work. You're not bad, old timer. Putting his fire away, the red-haired man's ears perked up when he heard a rumble in the distance. The two raised their heads, seeing a faint orange glow just over the next line of buildings. That must be where the rest of the heroes are gathered. It's been two or three minutes. They should have taken care of things by now. Gran Torino hummed to himself, wondering what could be going on while also looking back to the downed Nomu. We need to tie this guy up. The cops will take care of him from there, then we can help out. Endeavor's lips tightened, moving forward ahead of the elder hero. Leave him to my sidekicks. They'll make sure the cops take him. He peered down to Torino past his shoulder. There's an address that I want you to investigate for me, an alleyway at the 2nd of April 10 Echo Street. There may be trouble there. His glare focused back toward the horizon, where the action was no doubt taking place, as he recalled his son's words to him before he inexplicably took off. I am Endeavor. I can take care of the rest myself. Comma dot dot. Come on. Keep things moving. Manuel encouraged, ushering his sidekicks from the burning building as they escorted several people out of it. He kept pouring water on all the while, though the fire itself just seemed to spread faster. We need to get these people clear. The fire department are held up, so we gotta, crack, ha. Huh. The normal hero gasped and whipped his head up to see the entryway of the building start to collapse in on itself, just as a certain blonde heroine wearing a green and white costume was almost out from under it. Elaine, watch out. Carrying another woman on her back, Elaine was already hindered in her movement, and when she saw the structure above her start to crumble, her eyes widened. The woman on her back let out a scream right in her ear, taking her off guard, and then the doorway gave way. However, a split second later. Asterisk W H R R T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z C H K T. Elaine had flinched when the entryway began to fully collapse, but when she only felt a few little bits of debris hit her cheeks, she was left puzzled. Then, the sound of exerted grunting reached her ears, which prompted her to open her eyes again. What she saw next made her jaw drop. 
A six and a half foot tall gray and blue robot was stood there, holding up the frame as it stared at her with its red optics. Gah, miss, I know my exosuit must be a lot to take in, but please don't just stand there when you have a civilian with you. Auntie Blaze pleaded. Oh oh, right, sorry, Elaine apologized as she went through the rest of the way, getting out of the building and allowing Auntie Blake to release his hold on the frame. Setting the woman on her back gently down on the street, Elaine looked up to Manuel as she caught her breath. Ha, huh, that should be the last of them. Okay, now we can take care of the rest. Manuel's gaze shifted over to Auntie Blaze, the minicon walking over to the both of them. But ha, huh, who in the world are you people? Auntie Blaze gave him a salute. We're M.A.S.K., sir. The mobile armored strike commented. More specifically, I'm Agent Auntie Blaze, and my transforming mech suit is prepared to handle any fire. Manuel gave a short laugh, taking it all in. Ha, huh, well I've gotta say, thanks for your help, Auntie Blaze. That exosuit of yours is mighty impressive. Thanks, but we can discuss that later. All of a sudden, Auntie Blaze's arms rotated around so that the gun barrels at the tops of his shoulders were facing downward, his elbows rearranging so that now those were his hands. Right now, we've gotta put out this fire, and I'm just the agent for the job. Stomping his foot, the hose attached to his leg unhooked and fell near Elaine's feet. Miss, would you mind arming yourself with that? Could certainly use the help snuffing this fire out. Her eyebrows shooting up, Elaine reached down and hastily grabbed the hose. Oh oh, right, of course. I'll take the left side of the building. And I'll take the right. Manuel concurred. Horns. On it. Not far away, the horned hero from before came over and tore yet another fire hydrant off the curb, allowing water to gush straight up into the air for Manuel to use. It's done. Go for it. Horns signaled. Within seconds, Manuel followed through, using his quirk to redirect the water straight to the burning building. Taking aim himself, Anti Blaze aimed his blasters at the front side of the structure, only instead of shooting lasers, he blasted twin streams of water out, dousing the fire with his new human compatriots. Ha! Huh, if only working with heroes was this simple, the minicon mused in his head. Maybe one day we'll be able to without the whole, secret, thing getting in the way. Back at the main battle, things had gotten chaotic to say the least. Roller and Checkpoint had entered their robot modes to take on the largest Nomu, the one with no face, while Side was still airborne in his helicopter mode chasing down the flying Nomu. But on both fronts, their luck wasn't exactly holding out. Gah! Roller was sent flying back by a single punch from the Nomu, followed by Checkpoint thereafter. The two landed crouching down, the Minicon leader looking to his councilman. Gotta say, not a fan of how powerful this thing is, he remarked. Yeah, same, but why don't we take this up a notch with some real firepower? Asterisk WHRRTSCHZZTSCHZZZCHKT asterisk checkpoint jumped over and changed into his blaster mode, roller catching him and hefting his comrade over his shoulder like a bazooka. Gah, okay, aiming carefully, roller allowed the Nomu to get closer at ramming speed, right up until it was at point-blank range. Here goes. B-L-A-A-A-M a high-pitched screech escaped the Nomu's throat as the weapon fired directly into its abdomen, bringing it down to its knees in seconds. Ha ha. Yes. Bullseye. Not sure what a bull is, but we got him. Checkpoint affirmed, only to be left utterly galled when Ha saw that the Nomu's midsection regenerated within seconds, the beast slamming its foot down as it rose back to its full height. Oh scrap. Roller's grip loosened on his friend, allowing Checkpoint to transform back to robot mode. Are you kidding me? How durable is this thing? The beast roared in their faces and was about to lunge, when all of a sudden, Springer came screeching in at ramming speed sending the beast straight across the street once again. Springer's canopy opened up and revealed Spectrum, who was pointing at his helmet. You guys probably should have aimed for the head. He advised. Fair point. Checkpoint shrugged. Though good luck getting a clear shot at it. Moving over to the two, Roller asked, how's everything else going? Have all the civilians been evacuated? More or less, Springer replied. Red's bringing a lot of injured humans to the hospitals and strongarms giving him a police escort. But after that, she's gonna go around the city to try and find Tenya. Roller sighed and shook his head. Ha, huh, I still can't fathom what would make him think it'd be a good idea to hunt down the hero killer. 
I mean, I get it, his brother was hurt and that's horrible, but common sense should. Springer cut him off right there. Common sense goes out the window when it comes to a close comrade almost getting killed, little guy. Trust me, I've seen it happen to a lot of my fellow wreckers, and sometimes, it's even gotten them killed. He saw Roller contemplate his words before nodding, showing that he understood. But don't worry, we're not gonna let that happen to Tenya. For now, though, he trailed off as the Nomu returned to its feet, letting out an angry howl. We've gotta take these monsters down. I couldn't agree more, Springer. Optimus Prime spoke as he backed up toward them, his trailer beginning to move and shift into its combat deck mode. Once he unhitched the trailer, Prime himself rolled over to the others, pulling up next to his minicon partner. It's time that these creatures be dealt with, though if possible, try to only incapacitate them, so that the authorities may take them in for further testing. Ah, uh, wait, really? Springer questioned. Prime, no offense, but these things are killing machines. Should we? They were once human, Springer. Optimus interrupted, taking the triple changer aback. I learned of this only today, but it is true. And if we can learn more about how these former humans were changed into monsters, we could perhaps eventually track down the one responsible. For his part, Spectrum was left gobsmacked. Wait, you're saying that these things used to be people? He snapped his head around as the Nomu lowered its head, preparing to charge at them once again. Good lord, who in the world would have the power to do this to a person? Optimus hesitated to answer that. A question for another time, Spectrum. For now, let us bring this Nomu down. Roller, you know what to do. With a salute, Roller wasted no time in getting over to the combat deck. On it, Prime. Hey, brute for brains. Come over here. Waving his arms as he jumped on the platform, Roller immediately got the no-faced Nomu's attention, diverting its charge directly toward him in seconds. And, just as soon as it entered the platform's vicinity, the laser armature extended and aimed directly at it, shooting twin beams that hit it right in the shoulders. Alright, time to move in. Springer said, but then, the lasers stopped, leaving the group confused. What the? A-H. Get off a, there. Roller's sudden shout brought their attention back to him, and the winged Nomu that was now sat on the armature. Its landing managed to throw the lasers off course, sending the blasts every which way and forcing Spectrum, Checkpoint, and several other heroes to duck for cover. Prime and Springer rolled away as fast as they could while Roller tried to get things under control, though thankfully, a certain airborne minicon wasn't too far behind. Hey now, don't get her wings in a tizzy there, Freakazoid. Transforming into robot mode, Scythe tackled the Nomu off the combat deck and slammed it into the ground, using his massive fists to pummel it into submission. This. Ain't. Err. Perch. Ha. Huh, nice work, sir. Checkpoint saluted, only for the no-faced Nomu to come straight at him and the others again. Can we ever get a break here? Just as he asked that, though, something astonishing happened. A human man, one who had to be as tall as all might came in and punched the Nomu away with a fiery hit, pushing it back as its heels dug through the pavement. Checkpoint had to look up at the red-headed man, he was so tall. Huh, ask and I shall receive, you RK. Never mind. Unexpectedly, the man had grabbed Checkpoint by the throat, raising him up to eye level with a piercing glare directed into his optics. WHO are you? One of these, Decepticons, I've been hearing about. Ah. Uh, First off, back up, would you? Checkpoint requested. You smell like sulfur. Secondly, I'm no con, human, well, technically, I am, but I'm a mini con, there's a difference. So you're just smaller. The man deduced as a fire began to burn in the hand he held checkpoint in, making the bot cry out in pain. Then I'll have no issue eradicating you. Endeavor. Stand down. Snapping his head around, the voice that Endeavor heard call out to him was very familiar, but one that he hadn't heard in months. He had made it a point to try and avoid interacting with this particular group for a while, especially since he wasn't exactly a fan of them being on his planet. But lo and behold, Optimus Prime rolled up to him in his truck mode, parking himself before his holoform stepped out from the driver's side. Prime, what in the world are? That's Orion Pax to you. Pax interrupted, the two glowering at one another. The two men were at nearly the exact same height, though Orion wasn't nearly as muscular as the hero. Still, that didn't make him back down for a second. You're hurting one of my men. Let 
Him. Go. Endeavor snarled and released his grip on checkpoint, with Spectrum and Roller rushing over to check up on him. I don't like repeating myself or being interrupted. So I'll ask again, and I'd better get an answer this time, what in the hell are you doing here? And out in the open no less. Orion's scowl deepened, unimpressed with Engie's decorum. We are working undercover with MASK in order to help with the current situation. He gestured down to the mini cons, who were all staring at Endeavor fearfully. And you nearly blew their cover as agents using high-tech exosuits, he snapped. All that did was make Endeavor sneer at him even more. Who said we needed your help? This has nothing to do with you or your mission. The red-headed man promptly turned his back to the Prime, not even bothering to look at him. You're only making things worse. Instead of butting your noses into hero business, why don't you get working on getting those cons and yourselves off our damned planet? Maybe that would be a better use of your time. Is that so? Orion stormed forward and grabbed Endeavor's shoulder, yanking the number two hero back around to face him. With all due respect, Endeavor, when it comes to situations like these where people are in danger, I see it fit to make it my business. The same goes for me, as well. Spectrum piped up, pointing up at the much taller man. And you, sir, are officially interfering in MASK business. So give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Endeavor rounded about on Spectrum and roared, don't you think for a second that you get to tell me what to do, Tin Man. This is Japan, so you're officially on my turf. I don't care what Sector 7 has to say about it, I'm not about to let American heroes make those of Japan seem inferior. Springer rolled himself over, trying to get their attention. Ah, uh, guys. But Endeavor went on, prodding Spectrum's chest. Whether it's you, Star and Stripe, or are the Joes themselves. Hey, guys. All we want is to help, Endeavor. Spectrum insisted. We're not trying to steal anyone's thunder. Oh, you're already doing it just by being here. Hey, Springer exclaimed, bringing everyone's sights onto him. I hate to, well, actually, scratch that, I'm more than happy to interrupt this petty squabble, because we've still got Mr. Brains to deal with over there. Realizing what he was talking about, the group all spun around to see the no-faced Nomu emerging from the rubble of the building Endeavor hit it into, its arm limp at its side with exposed tendons where it had been burned. However, much to Endeavor's surprise, the beast flexed the arm and it healed almost immediately. HMPH, so you can regenerate. Well then, letting out a yell, Endeavor charged forward, meeting the Nomu halfway as they both grappled with one another. Seeing the hero's hands going for its head, though, Orion knew exactly what was coming next. Endeavor. No. Let's see you come back from this. The palms of Endeavor's hands ignited in a brilliant orange flame, which only grew hotter and hotter until the color changed to a bright blue. The blast engulfed the Nomu's head, the beast shrieking in pain, which was silenced within moments. By the time Endeavor stopped, the Nomu was left with no head as it fell to the ground, just a smoking stump where it used to be. With a smug grin, Endeavor reveled in his victory. Incinerated cells can't regenerate, gah. But his moment was cut short when, from out of nowhere, Scythe came flying in and collided with the hero, bringing Endeavor down while the mini Khan himself slammed into another structure. Grah. Damn it. That thing threw me off. Scythe extended his fingers into their Gatling gun modes and took aim, only to see the flying Nomu go swooping overhead with another hero in its talons. Ah gh. Somebody. Please help me. The man cried, only to fall unconscious out of shock. Scythe stomped the ground as everyone gathered up, including the recovered Endeavor. Fare the lova, that thing's a damn menace. He turned over to Springer. Kid, let's get after it. Way ahead of you on that, Sarge. Springer affirmed. Spectrum, climb aboard. Tracker gave a thumbs up. On it, let's go. Asterisk W H R R T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z T S C H Z Z C H K T. Once Spectrum was in his cockpit, Springer shifted from his armored car to helicopter mode, the triple changer flying straight up, much to the astonishment of many heroes. It was then that Scythe himself also transformed into his weapon mode, attaching himself right underneath the nose section of Springer's alt mode to provide some extra firepower. Whoa, would you look at that? Elaine exclaimed. These MASK people have some really high-tech stuff on them, Horns commented as well. 
Hearing the commentary, Endeavor found it frustrating that the other heroes were actually somehow buying the lie. I suppose people will believe anything these days, he pushed those thoughts to the back of his mind, however, peering over his shoulder to the heroes. Any hero whose quirk isn't suited for this are helping put out the fires, go help on Echo Street in District 4. Hearing this, the heroes were left perplexed, Orion included. Another villain, he questioned. I don't know, but as much as it pains me to have to work with you, I suppose I have no other choice at the moment. Endeavor's attention went back to the fleeing Nomu. Just go do it. Meanwhile, I'll help your people take that monster down. Orion had to bite his non-existent tongue in frustration, watching Endeavor follow after Springer and Spectrum. But still, he recognized that Endeavor wouldn't request such a thing without proper cause. The number two hero must have some sense of honesty when it comes to his duties, even if for the wrong reasons. He cleared his throat and spoke up to the others, heroes. You heard Endeavor. Load up into my cab and we'll head to District 4 as soon as possible. Craning his head toward the mini cons, Orion pointed at his partner. Agent Roller, stay here and man the combat deck. It has a fire resistant spray function that can be used to douse these flames even further. Roller and Checkpoint saluted without question. Roger that, Orion Pax, sir. Excellent, I know you will do well. While the mini cons did that, though, Optimus saw it fit to contact the other Autobots in the city. Doctor, Cadet, do you read me? Loud and clear, Pax. Red Alert replied. Go ahead. There has been a slight change of plans. Endeavor is here, and he's just informed me of potential trouble on Echo Street in District 4. Strongarm piped up at that. District 4, I'm close to there. Are there more Nomu? Uncertain, but myself and several other heroes are on the way there now to find out. Orion climbed into the driver's seat of his alt mode and started his engine, rolling out toward District 4 without a moment to spare. I will meet you all there soon. Springer and Endeavor are currently pursuing the last remaining Nomu, so with any luck, they will bring it down soon. The Prime opened his comms further to contact headquarters. Orion packs to base, I need one of you to retrieve some information regarding the layout of Hosu City. Bulkhead was the one who replied, though he seemed hesitant. Uh, hey uh, Pax, buck here. We're, uh, actually in the middle of trying to figure that out ourselves. Orion paused just as he was about to get into the cab, allowing Bulkhead to continue. We just got informed by Kyoka that Izuku texted out his coordinates via the Class 1A group chat. We're assuming it's a distress signal and we're getting Bumblebee there ASAP. A bad feeling entered Prime's processor hearing that. Out of curiosity, did these coordinates come with an address? Yeah, the 2nd of April 10 Echo Street. Why? That sealed it. Optimus Prime now knew exactly what was on the top of his priority list. Izuku, Tenya, the hero killer, he muttered before switching back over to the local comm. Doctor. Cadet. An addendum to that order, make it double time. Izuku has found our target, I repeat, Izuku has found our target. With his message relayed, Optimus brought his holoform in, seeing the other heroes strapped in and ready for transport. Roll out. Comma dot dot. Back across town, the green-haired boy in question finally made it out to the street with his classmates and mentor, the hero killer being dragged unceremoniously behind them. Of course, having to carry Native wasn't much of a bother for him, but he was glad to finally be able to put him down, waiting for medical personnel to arrive and take care of the rest. But just as he did, a certain crotchety voice could be heard from across the street. Gah, what are you two doing here? Izuku whipped his head up and gasped at the sight of his other mentor, who was already halfway across the street. G Grand Torino, I I can expla, U R K. I thought I told you to stay on the bullet train. Torino admonished with a kick to the face. As the old man hopped to the ground, Shoto raised a brow at him. Who's this? Oomph, Gran Torino, the other hero I'm interning with. Izuku sat up, rubbing his sore cheek as he looked to the old man curiously. But I don't get it, how'd you find us? I was told to come here by someone else. Torino answered, placing his hands on his hips. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm glad that you're not dead, at least. Izuku bowed his head profusely. I'm sorry to make you worry. A short huff escaped Torino, resigning to the apology. Sheesh, this side of him reminds me of Toshinori, 
but he didn't dwell on that for too long as he scrunched his nose in anger at the rabbit hero next. In Yusugiyama, I wouldn't be surprised if it was you who encouraged him to leave the train in the first place. What in the hell were you thinking? Ah, uh, listen, old man, first of all, you really shouldn't have expected me to stay on that freaking train. Mirko said defiantly with a single finger raised, only to bring up another. And secondly, Deku here. He was instrumental in bringing this asshole down, along with his two buddies over here, as hurt as they may be. So if you wanna take the piss out of us, then fine, but before ya do, tugging the rope, Mirko made Stain fall onto his back. Look at our hall first. Gran Torino had to do a double take when he saw who it was that they had tied up. For his part, he honestly couldn't believe it. The, the hero killer. He whipped his head up to the floor. You took on the hero killer and Juan. Well, Juan, is definitely a way to put it. Shoto muttered. The term, survived, would probably be a better one. Astonishing, huh? Torino raised his head at the sound of approaching sirens coming from down the street, where two emergency response vehicles were closing in fast. One was a blue and white police jeep, which was certainly a rare sight, and next to it was a Nissan Patrol M's vehicle. Both of them pulled up to the curb and the jeep's door flung open first, followed by a tall woman who was frantically sprinting straight at the group. Her desperate eyes were locked firmly on Ieda, her concern clearly etched on her features. Tenya. Stro, S. Stella. Tenya exclaimed, taking a step back in surprise. I I can expla, how? But he didn't get the chance to as the screaming boy was enveloped in a soul-crushing hug, with Stella unknowingly pressing him firmly into her chest as she went on a tirade. Do you have any idea how worried I was about you? What in the name of Primus were you thinking? She took him by the shoulders and pried him out of her bosom, all while everyone else watched with slack jaws. I mean, I have half a mind to court-martial you, and you aren't even an officer. She snapped. Now able to breath again, Tenya quickly tried to forget what just happened as he lowered his head to his Autobot partner. I, ha, huh, I know. What I did was incredibly foolish, and I never should have tried it in the first place. You've got that right. Stella concurred, only for her hardened expression to soften with sadness. Oh, but I'm honestly not much better. I should have made more of an effort to help you. To comfort you in your time of need. To find the hero killer before you could. She bowed her head as well. Maybe then, my partner wouldn't have ended up in this mess. Tenya pursed his lips, lifting his head back up to her. No, Stella, don't blame yourself. This, this whole mess was. A disaster that we don't need to repeat again. Izuku piped up, wearing a soft smile. Like I said before, there's enough blame to go around. But right now, let's just be glad that it's over, huh? He stepped to the side, allowing Stella to see the captured and unconscious hero killer. After all, Stain's not going to be a problem for anyone anymore. Instantly, Stella's mouth fell open in utter shock, her eyes darting between Stain, the boys, and Mirko. W wa, you, you beat the hero killer. Again, a very strong way to put it. Shoto asserted, raising a brow to her knowingly. That said, I think a certain yellow friend of yours can share the credit since he got the final hits in. Stella did a double take at that, trying to play dumb. Ah, I I'm sorry young man, B but I don't know what you're. He saw Bumblebee come through the ground bridge and transform, Strongarm. Izuku whispered into her ear. He and Mirko both know. The holoform's eyes widened at that, gawking incredulously at Shoto and the rabbit hero while the former gave her a cheeky wave. Scrap. Torino couldn't help but scrunch his face in suspicion. Err, what's going on here? Am I missing something? Apologies sir. From the Nissan Patrol, a man in a doctor's coat, blue jeans, a black undershirt and red sunglasses approached, nodding down to the elderly hero. My associate, Cadet Armstrong, is a close friend of Tenya Ieda. In fact, he craned his head over toward Izuku. Young Izuku here is also a good friend as well. No doubt you've met Brian, right? Oh yeah, the blonde kid. Torino scratched his beard. He with you. Precisely. The doctor readjusted his glasses. As for myself, my name is Dr. Randall, and we're with MASK, the Mobile Armored Strike Command. We've been in Japan for a while now and we've been aiding these students in their training. If anything, this took Torino even more off guard. Wait, M-A-S-K. You're with Sector 7, then. 
He whirled around and glared at Izuku, making him flinch. Boy, what in the world has Toshinori gotten you into? What are you doing going around being trained by military people? There was a long pause after that, the greenette processing everything his mentor just said. You know, I, I probably should have figured you knew about Sector 7 if you knew about Snake Eyes. Izuku rubbed his neck sheepishly. I in that case, maybe there's no harm in telling you about. Honk honk. Whatever Izuku was about to say, it would have to wait. Coming down the street from the opposite direction, was a large red and blue semi-truck, its doors opening the very moment it parked on the road. Piling out of it came several heroes from the manual agency, with Elaine in the lead as she pointed to the group. There they are. We've found them. The blonde woman waved to the group as she and her peers came up to them. You there. Is everybody alright? Another hero, one with what could only be described as a sock head, spoke up as well. Endeavor told us there was a request for help here, but, wait, what? M. Mirko. A hero in a red mask exclaimed, seeing the rabbit hero before him. And, children. Giving the group a smirk, Mirko lifted the rope she was holding. Don't worry, people, everything's under control. The villain's been stopped and everybody's alive. That said, we do have some injured kids here. She set her sights back onto Stella and Dr. Randall, giving them a wink. Thankfully, the proper authorities have already arrived. Officer, mind cuffing this guy for me. It was only then that the heroes noticed who Mirko had tied up, and Elaine let out a gasp. A.H. Is that the hero killer? No way. The red masked hero shouted. You're telling me that Mirko and a bunch of kids took him down. Exactly. Mirko stated proudly, not noticing that a certain truck driver was making his way through the crowd as well. And I've gotta give these boys credit, they fought damn hard to help me bring this guy down. Hey doc, make sure those two get to the hospital ASAP, would ya? They need it. However, Dr. Randall didn't respond, instead focusing on something else as he and Stella stood at attention. Ah, uh, hello. Did ya hear me? I did, but, well, look ahead of you. The doctor replied. Mirko spun back around, and was met with the midsection of someone wearing a red flannel shirt. Her eyes widened and she craned her head up to see Orion Pax staring down at her, his expression stoic and unreadable. Oh, hiya. Orion spared a brief glance over to Izuku, Tenya and Shoto, the former two somewhat nervous while the latter remained calm. Bringing his sights back down to Mirko, Orion sighed. I am not entirely impressed that two of these children were injured in accomplishing this, Mirko. In fact, I do not hesitate in calling it rather reckless. As he peered down to the tied up stain, though, the man admitted, however, despite all of that, the four of you did manage to bring down the hero killer, so I will give you due credit on that. It was then that he focused squarely on Tenya, making the young man freeze up. But Tenya, we need to have a serious conversation later. Just by Prime's tone alone, Tenya could tell just how disappointed he was. You brought this upon yourself, Ieda, he scolded himself. You knew exactly what you were getting into. Still, he bowed his head to Orion and muttered, yes, sir. Hem, but for now, let us get you to a hospital, Orion's sights went down to the ensnared hero killer. And get him into police custody. Cadet Armstrong. Why yes, sir. Stella reached into her alt mode producing a set of cuffs on it just as she was about to slap the restraints on however the sound of heavy wings flapping in the air came from high above which gran torino immediately noticed get down ah oh no elaine cried out seeing the beast approach from the air even so no one could react fast enough as the flying nomu swooped down grabbed izuku with its talons and then shot back up into the air taking the boy with it no Orion bellowed, Izuku, everything had happened so fast that Izuku had only just processed it himself, and began struggling to try and free himself. Ow, hey, let go, ack, prime. Mirko wasn't about to waste time, pumping her legs and leaping straight after the Nomu. Hold on, kid, I'm coming, but then, fwoosh asterisk, ah. With just a few flaps of its wings, the Nomu managed to whip up a gust of wind that took Mirko off balance, sending her falling right out of the sky and flat on her back. No, you bastard. Get back here, ah. She was caught off guard when something splattered across her cheek, 
bringing her gloved hand up to wipe it off. Is this, blood? It must be trying to escape. Elaine deduced, another blood splatter also finding a home on her cheek. It's injured. Randall further concluded, Springer and Endeavor must have. Clear the way. Right as the doctor spoke his name, Springer came flying from around the nearest block, following after the Nomu intently. With Scythe still attached to his underside, the Minicon aimed his weapons at the beast, ready to let loose again. Let's see how you like flying with a bunch of holes in your wings you. Spectrum, cease fire. Orion called out through his cum link, to both the MASK leader and the triple changer. The Nomu has Izuku, I repeat, the Nomu has Izuku. Stopping on a dime, Springer hovered in midair, allowing Spectrum to get a good look at the beast carrying the student off. Gah, damn, that thing is smart. The armored hero slammed his fist frustratingly. It knows we won't risk hurting the kid. Down on the ground, Gran Torino and Mirko were in a similarly irritating spot. Shoot, if it takes him too high, neither of us will be able to reach it with our quirks. The old man clenched his fists. What do we do? Little did anybody there know, however, that a certain someone still had an extra knife up their sleeve. With the Nomu serving as a momentary distraction, Stain took those few seconds to suddenly shoot up from where he was sitting, extending his tongue out to lick the Nomu's blood off of Elaine's cheek. The very next second, the beast was paralyzed in midair, causing its wings to stop flapping and the wind gusts to cease. Everyone was blindsided by the hero killer as he shot forward through the crowd, pursuing the Nomu. The word, hero, has lost all meaning in this society. He exclaimed as he leapt up, the rope falling off of him as he landed on the Nomu's back and reeled the knife back. The world is overrun by fakes and criminals like you who chase petty dreams. He emphasized his point by stabbing the Nomu in its exposed brain, right near where its eye had already been blown out. Riding its lifeless body to the street below, he kept his hand on Izuku's back, pinning him down. You all must be purged, Izuku stared up at him in silent shock, fear and confusion overtaking him. Everything I do, is to create a stronger society. The rest of the crowd were left in a similarly confused yet astonished state. Did, did he just save that kid? One hero asked. You idiot, he took him hostage. Another hero berated. Elaine was particularly grossed out that the hero killer's tongue had licked her cheek, and all the more horrified after seeing what he just did. He killed that monster without hesitation, what is he? Orion quickly came to a conclusion to that. Someone who is very clearly mentally unstable. Heroes, MASK agents, prepare for combat. We have another fight on R. What are you people just standing around like fools for? Everyone's eyes were brought back toward the block behind them where Endeavor came running onto the scene, no doubt searching for the Nomu. The villain must have flown this way, right? Despite himself, Orion couldn't help but sour at the red-haired man's belligerent attitude. I'm afraid if you were intending to kill it, Endeavor, you are too late. He pointed over to Izuku and Stain. Now we have a much more delicate situation on our hands. Seeing the disheveled man holding Izuku down, it didn't take long for Endeavor to realize who that was. Wait, don't tell me that, within seconds, an eager and smug grin worked its way to Endeavor's lips, pulling back his hand to ready a fiery blast. Hero killer. Stop. Orion hollered, ready to charge at the number 2 pro if he had to. Wait, Todoroki. Gran Torino joined in as well. But then, everything seemed to slow down the very moment Stain glanced back, seeing the flame hero in his presence. Endeavor. He spoke venomously as his tattered mask slipped off his face. From his vantage point, Izuku was met with a very terrifying sight, which was shared with everyone else as Stain stood up and turned. The entire group froze, seeing the man's scarred, noseless visage with his blood-red eyes seemingly almost popping out of his skull. His teeth were clenched in blood-lusting rage, giving him the appearance of a human skull that still somehow had skin and hair on it. It was a petrifying image. You false hero. He screamed, his voice hoarse as he shambled forward, his glare piercing through them all. I'll make this right. These streets, must run with the blood of hypocrites. It was as if a malevolent wave of emotion was permeating off of the hero killer and washing over everyone, paralyzing them with pure and utter fear. Hero. I will reclaim that word. Stain continued, stomping his foot to the pavement. Come on. Just try and stop me, you fakes. 
By this point, even Endeavor and Mirko were left chilled to the bone, and it only got worse as Stain's lips twisted into a depraved, rictus grin. There's only one man I'll let kill me. He, is a true hero. Throwing his head back, Stain screamed into the sky above, All Might is worthy. For what felt like an eternity, nobody moved a muscle, and if they did, they were trembling in utter terror. However, the tension was broken when something fell to the ground with a tink asterisk. Snapping out of their fear-induced trances, they all saw that the hero killer had dropped his knife, and now stood just as motionless as they all had before. His mouth was wide open and his eyes had rolled back into his head, slightly hunched as if he could fall over at any time. Endeavor blinked, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. I think, he's out cold. B but, how is that possible? Mirko stammered, standing up cautiously. Without an ounce of hesitation, Orion approached the motionless killer, ushering Dr. Randall to follow. Doctor, I require your prognosis. Ahem, of course, Orion. Randall followed and placed a finger on his glasses, running a scan over Stain's body from his alt mode. After a few seconds, he was able to infer what had happened to him. Well, he has several lacerations and broken bones, including many of his ribs. One of which has pierced his lung, causing him to swallow his own blood. He requires medical attention right away. Th that's why he stopped like that. Izuku concluded. He was stopped by his own quirk, which means it's over. The one for all user brought his eyes over to Orion, the prime staring into Stain's blank gaze. But, why couldn't any of us do anything? Orion let out a short breath, pondering that himself. Because, Izuku, this man's convictions are what kept him going. Reaching over, he placed a comforting hand on his pupil's shoulder. We have been through much this evening, to be sure. But in the end, it was the hero killer himself who had the most fight left in him. And it's the end of season 2 part 27 of this what if, I hope you guys like it, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel.